channel i hope you all are doing well this is one of two videos you guys are getting today because i wasn't feeling up to filming this video the metallica and justice for all album overview so we're doing it today which i can't believe we are already on and justice for all's overview we are done with that album and going on to the fifth album next week oh my god <laughs> i can't tell you how fast these series go for me it's next thing i know it's overview time. Unbelievable. Anyways, let me stop rambling as I tend to do and uh, let's jump into it. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, turn your bell notifications to on so you get all of my content and with that let's talk about Metallica's fourth album and Justice for All. Alright you guys, this is unfair because my coffee is cold now and uh, I'm a bit cold. I have a blanket with me today because I don't know why I'm so cold. Normally I'm never cold because I like it. I like the cold weather and uh, I must be a mutant because who likes the cold? But I do and I like snow and uh, that's why my room looks like a snow wonderland because I'm obsessed with it. I need to get that checked out, really. <laughs> I'm rambling. You guys, I really need to work on that. That's not what you're here to hear. You're here to hear... <laughs> You're here to hear me talk about Metallica, their overview of the fourth album. How this is going to work out, it's going to be broken down into three parts. If you've been here with me before, you'll know that. Part one is I'm going to give you my initial thoughts of the... <clears throat> what the... My voice went out there for a minute. Um, okay, failure. The first part is my thoughts of the album as a whole. Just a little bit of my thoughts, that is. Then part two is, is each song individually. And then the last part is the rest of my thoughts of the album as a whole. So, let's begin. Let's start with my overall thoughts of the album. It arranges on some incredible topic. And not that the previous albums didn't, but this album has more important topics than personal topics, where in the other albums we saw a decent array of topics. Sometimes you hear more important political type of topics than personal topics, similar to the song on this album, the very last one, Dyer's Eve, where he talks about his parents and growing up and being influenced by them. That's a personal topic, not love or anything, but um, for Metallica that is. But here we're talking about instead of doing a decent blend of the two, he is talking more political, more important topics on this record, which I find this album to be held in the utmost respect because of what they're willing to do to try to get people to understand what's going on in the world. This album does have a less audible bass in it, but you guys told me on why, and that I hope I'm saying his name right. It, is it Cliff Burton? The thing is, we're four albums in, and uh, I've become to be very fond of Cliff. His work is incredible, and I am quite sad to have heard that he, he is no longer with us because of what happened. He's no longer with us, period. And uh, I feel like you can't have Metallica without him. It makes me think of Def Leppard without Steve Clark. That is Def Leppard. You can't, no offense, you can't have a band without one of its founding members like sure you can find somebody just as good like much like um acdc did with brian johnson or you know without malcolm young but with bands like Def Leppard, it was never the same. I don't know if that's going to be the case here, because we only just got done with the fourth album. And we only just, in the timeline, lost Cliff. So I don't know if this is going to change things with Metallica, but uh, we're already having less audible bass. I, I hope it doesn't change anything. There's such complexity in this album. They, again, continue to outdo themselves. There's aggression at times, strong riffs, insightful lyrics, very beautiful. There's determination and extra sections, odd time signatures, of course, amazing harmonized vocals, and just vicious part. Just incredible, really. All right. I'm going to stop there and we're going to talk about each song as a whole. 
All right, I do have my phone open for the track titles. So the first one is Blackened, and it had incredible drum work in it. A perfect hook, nicely performed buildup, and even had some distorted riff at times. Very incredible opener, beautifully done, and it works perfectly with the end song, Dyer's Eve. I think they coexist perfectly together, the way they're performed, how they're the intro, and just everything about them. Number two is the album title track, which is And Justice For All. In this song, there's so many different time signatures and it works. It's a political track. He's telling the truth. There's a vulnerability within this track. There is also a masculinity in the riff. It's quite melodic at times. I I really enjoyed this one as well. Eye of the Beholder, the structure is on point. There's a killer chorus, incredible vocals, just additives that just bring this story more to life and what they are attempting to do is just it is beautiful the next song is called one which i'm going to remind you guys i do have a patreon and i did react to this music video and it's up now which um only costs two dollars to join and uh, it is in the description box down below along with our discord if you want to be a part of our discord community and just chat music or life or whatever so one was the ballad, the big ballad on this album, and um, I understand they are in a genre called thrash or heavy metal. I think that's an understatement. I think you guys would sit there and tell me, no, it's thrash. So there was a deep thrash type of a chorus and outro um, to really make this more of a Metallica ballad than just a normal ballad you hear even in the rock music space. Um, this song is a masterpiece, one of their best. There's such a complexity within it. You feel almost a panic attack within the music. It's addictive. It brings the story to life. The lyrics are breathtaking. There's even a brilliance to the rhythmic guitar. Just, it's all incredible. It truly is. I adore this song. Sad But True will always be my favorite, but one is right up there. It's hard to choose a favorite because they're all their own in every right, and it's hard to pick one because they're their own entity. But the next song is The Shortest Straw, and the riff speed is similar to wanting to run or get away. And that's kind of what The Shortest Straw is about. I mean, if you look at the story, it's getting picked for something you didn't want to do. You're the last person, and, and you just want to get away because that's not what you wanted to do. So, I mean, the, the arrangement is perfect. The structure is strong. Everything about this song is just incredible. The next song is Harvester of Sorrow, and this song is quite on the mid-tempo range. The structure, again, is incredible. It's on point. Also, in this song, there's an addictive riff involved, and the chorus is beautiful, and the techniques on this song are so impressive. They continue to outdo themselves. Quite amazing. The next song is The Frayed Ends of Insanity, and and I love the Wizard of Oz reference in this song. The lyrics are so important. I think a lot of Metallica songs should be listened to. This one is definitely one of the top. This song is masterfully done. I just, they did everything right within this track. To live is to die. It's an instrumental. You experience an array of emotions. From what I understand, this is a tribute to cliff and i get that i originally said that this song is about life and death because that is exactly what the song title is alluding to and you go through the range of emotions when losing that person like you go through life just to end up dying one day and you you go through so many different emotions. But I do think you guys are meaning that this song is the grief process. And that absolutely could be and I could see that. 
but um, again we all see instrumentals and songs completely different in that that don't make any one of us wrong in what the song means the last one is Dyer's Eve and I told you guys listening to the song I wanted to see how they would outdo themselves especially intros and outros you really got to go hard and they did that they were outstanding I mean the lyrics are personal and the techniques were incredible the the signature within the song was just they did everything right they kept you from getting bored and feeling like you've heard this before that's them that is always them so let's finish up the rest of my thoughts and one of them is that I'm curious to see how much more ambitious and complex they can get. How much more can they outdo themselves? And I'm saying that because you can only go so high. You can only break the glass ceiling once. Eventually, they're going to no longer be able to outdo themselves because they did it all. And you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'll continue to find a way, but I'm quite curious to see that. And I hope that day never comes, but that's something you got to think about and that uh, I mean maybe you guys know that answer and being Metallica super fans you may have heard that album um, but yeah the topic were beautifully chosen and perfect they they did everything perfectly and sometimes even simplistic without falling into the the typical hard rock blueprint that that some people fall into also the lyrics are brilliant and honest. It's just incredible. This is one hell of an album and I see why you guys pushed for me to listen to it because I would have been missing out truly. So thank you all. Let me know your guys' thoughts with all these songs or this album as a whole. I can't wait to see your responses. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe and well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.